Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olean's.com Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 22, Manual Punch Part 3. We're going to work a little bit more with the Manual Punch tool so you can see some of the differences in uh, that and using the Line Region tool. First I'll go to my Image tab and I'm going to open a image from a folder I've already made. It's a simple little snake and uh, we're going to first we're going to digitize it with the line region fill tool by just simply tracing around it. Uh, we're going to use the curve since this is a curvy uh, and it will make it easier. We're going to use the semi-automatic because this is a very simple uh, graphic and it's the perfect application for using the semi-automatic. Normally you don't use this too often but for real simple graphics like this it can make the going much quicker. Uh, it intuitively knows to cling to the graphic. If it was a vector design it would be even better. So now be careful when you're going around curves with a closed path because if you cross the line when you double click at the end the fill stitches will not populate. These probably aren't going to populate anyway because I think I forgot to turn on the fill stitch. We'll see in a moment after I finish. And double click. I'm almost... Yes, I did not click on the uh, uh, the fill stitch. So I'm going to select the object and turn it on. And you see it filled, it populated with the uh, fill stitch. Let's see what that looks like in realistic preview. And I'll put a couple eyes in there and he'll be okay. But let me show you how it's going to look if you use, let's move this to the side, if you use the manual punch tool under the home, manual punch, and we're going to use the curved block. So as I told you I always like to say top, bottom, top, bottom so I can know where I started and began. So top, bottom, top, bottom. I'll spare you the rest. I notice when I uh, am going on a curve I try to go straight across. In other words I don't go over here or over there. You want the stitches to go as, as true as possible with the, with the curve. And trust me when I say you will get much better at this the more you do it. See now my top is on the bottom and my bottom is on the top, but it doesn't make a difference. And double click to finish it. Now look at this nice curvy curvy snake we have. Let's look at him and you see how much smoother and nicer that looks. And now even if I had it in fill stitches, it still looks better than the fill stitches we have over here. You say, well, I like that uh, uh, nice black outline on the out, uh, on the outside of that snake, and we can do that too. All right, I first want to change these back into a uh, st stitch view and I'm going to change this manual punch into a satin stitch because I want to show you something that you need to do whenever you use a uh, manual punch and you're going around tight curves like here and around here and around this curve I'm going to get the zoom so you can see really closely what's happening here you see how these stitches are all bunched in there? We're going to select it and we're going to go to the sewing attributes and we're going to check this little box called half stitch. You see how it pulls those, you're not going to have all your stitches jamming in here that cause the thread breaks. You're going to uh, you see that uh, it pulled them out here and let's see if they were uh, 
not too jammed up there but if they were they would have pulled some stitches stitches out there as well so um, now you not have to worry about your stitches jamming up there now the trouble with these two snakes and I haven't added the eyes or anything but when you look at them in realistic preview the snake on the right this one looks so much smoother and it looks so much nicer than this where all the stitches are going to 45 degrees now true when you select that you can change the direction of the stitches but it's still not going to look that much better but you say well I like that outline on the uh, outside of the uh, snake I wanted that black outline uh, and that's one advantage of the line region tool is that you can automatically put an outline. So if you're using a manual punch stitch, the way to outline it is to put another manual punch stitch around it. This process takes a little bit of time, but I can promise you the results are well worth it. So I'm going to start by using a curved block manual punch. And I'm going to start once again in this corner, top, bottom, top, bottom. I'll just say this in my head to myself. You can always right click to undo the last point you put down if you don't like the position of it rather than go back and edit it. So here we are, just about finished. With our snake. I saved you. I don't think I, it took me more than uh, three minutes since I paused this recording to finish getting around this snake. Okay, double clicked and finished it. So let's take a look and see what our snake looks like. Okay, so uh, look at them both in realistic preview. Which snake do you want? As with the uh, manual punch in the middle of it, you also want to put the half hitch on these stitches so that they won't get jammed up as well but you can see the difference in uh, using a fill even if you wanted it to be a fill stitch it's still going to look nice uh, how do we determine if we need a full stitch let's get our our little measure tool and I'm going to go from the thickest section I will go from here I'm going to click it and drag it and looking down in that bottom I can see that even at the thickest point it still does not go over 10 millimeters so that's going to be plenty wide for a satin stitch so let's go ahead and make that a satin stitch because whenever possible I like to use satin stitches because they look so much smoother and it just gives more depth We're going to get that satin stitch. Also, very important, we need to measure the outline because as you can not make a uh, satin stitch any longer than 10 millimeters, you don't want to make it any less than 1 millimeter. And even that, okay, that's 1.5, so that's pretty good. I think they're all just about 1.5. 120. They're all at least are over a millimeter and believe me they're going to shrink in. You also don't want to have uh, that much density either. Uh, the, the density for the main fill is fine but the density for the outline we're going to put that down to um, let's say 3.7. That's all you need for an outline. 3.5, 3.7. That's all you need for the outline. And that's it for manual punch part three.